Okay, let's talk Chinese carrier wings. So, in the last video we discussed what may be the long-term plan of the Chinese Navy from a strategic point of view. The aircraft carrier Type 003 is going to be launched soon, the Type 004 will follow, and then surely there is a long-term plan on how to use them. The end state in 10 or 15 years is going to be a carrier fleet but its main mission is probably still uncertain. It can either be the centerpiece of a defensive posture to defend the first and the second island chain, or it could be an offensive force to contrast the US Navy in blue waters and to support ground operations in the Malacca Strait. Or it could even evolve from a defensive force to an offensive force for what we know. Fact is, the US Navy is the only opponent that could conceivably contrast a fleet of 6 to 10 Type 003 and 004 aircraft carriers trying to access the Indian Ocean. Sir, I suspect many Indian viewers will be upset by this observation. Come on, Otis, let me have some fun from time to time. Anyway, the carrier is only a mobile infrastructure. What makes the carrier worth having is the carrier wing. In fact, the capabilities of the aircraft based on the carrier are basically the offensive capabilities of the carrier group. Some kind viewers in the previous video pointed out how the Chinese are intensely working on hypersonic and ballistic anti-ship weapons. And these may indeed be another piece of the puzzle. In fact, these weapons in the near future may become an important part of the capabilities provided by the carrier battle group. However, this is a subject for another time. In this video, we are focusing on the potential carrier wing of the Type 003 and 004. And since we like being different, where everybody else would start from the fighters, we start from the force multipliers. Oaxes, tankers, drones. Probably the most important force multipliers of all are the airborne early warning radars. And in September 2020, the KJ-600 made its maiden flight. The Chinese have invested heavily in the development of OAXs and they have several models in service. However, it is not easy to convert that kind of platform for naval use. In fact, albeit some have found some similarities with the larger Xi'an Y7, the KJ-600 is smaller and probably designed a dock. Its development though was unusually long for the Chinese. In fact, it was necessary to build a technology demonstrator. The JZY01 flew for the first time in, in 2001. It has been used during the years to test several different configurations and the current configuration has been seen for the first time in 2012. The KJ600 has the same general configuration of the 2 Okai because, uh, well, it's, it's just concurrent engineering. There is nothing intrinsically special or secret in the E2 platform. As we speak in April 2022, the aircraft is still in development, so we don't have a wealth of news about it. The Radum seems to be an actually rotating Radum, which is different from the most recent Chinese configurations, but it seems unlikely that the radar is not going to be an AISA radar. Some sources are reporting that the KJ600 is going to benefit of a very advanced solution in terms of battle management and network-centric warfare. It is suspected to have four or five operators stations that will benefit of the integration with an indigenous high-speed data link, the DTS-03. The data link will feature a bandwidth of 2 megabit per second, a range of 400 kilometers, and it will support, obviously, voice and data communications. Sir, have you ever wondered if military data links do support music streaming? Uh, please ignore him. 
We don't know if the DTS-03 supports music, but we know that the DTS-03 supports adopt networking. This means that the network can be formed spontaneously and can be composed by all the assets that support the data link within range without the necessity of having a node or several nodes to create the network. Probably in different contexts, it would be called a peer-to-peer -peer network. Some numbers about the radar range have been bouncing around in the press, but they are the usual meaningless numbers. What seems certain though is that the KJ600 is going to be a definitely an improvement if compared with the current situation. In fact, on the current type 001 and 002, the Liaoning and the Shandong, the Chinese used CAMOV 31 helicopters in the same role. And it is clear that the KJ600 compared with the helicopters will have more time on station, more operators, more computing power, more electrical power, and it will be faster. <laughs> All observers agree that the KJ600 will require a catapult to take off from a carrier, so it surely won't be on board of 001 and 002, but it seems only logical that it will be deployed on 003 and uh, following. We have no news of the introduction of a tanker aircraft on the Type 003 carrier. This may not be an anomaly since even the United States Navy doesn't have a dedicated tanker anymore and the F-18 uh, covers this uh, role too. But this is a missing capability, it is a compromise, it is not by design. In fact, this is going to change in the near future with the introduction of the MQ-25 in the United States, but there is no sign that the Chinese are going down this way as well. We can speculate that once you have a platform like the KJ-600, while removing all the electronics and all the OX equipment, you can possibly adapt that platform for the tanker role. But this is just speculation. China, since 2019, has introduced in service a stealth UCAV, the GJ-11 Sharp Sword, which probably a world first. It has a flying wing configuration, not too dissimilar from the MQ-25 or the Neuron, the Okotnik, and several other experimental projects. It is designed as a ground attack unit and it has two weapon bays that can house each kind of compact PGMs. We know that it is in service with the Air Force, but its actual use so far it is actually shrouded in secrecy. The wingspan is estimated to be 14 meters, the empty weight is 6,350 kilos, and the maximum takeoff weight is 20,200 kilos. It is subsonic, the engine has no afterburner, and the speed is estimated to be around 500 knots. The transfer range is declared to be about 4,000 km, which means that probably the combat uh, range is in the region of a bit more than 1,000 km. Not enormous, but pretty decent. Some analysts believe that the aircraft as it is now cannot operate from carriers, and granted it will need an adaptation. However, if the engine thrust is probably low for carrier operations, the wing seems capable of quite a lot of lift, and you can spot quite large flaps on the trailing edge. So while it is questionable that it could take off from a ski jump, I don't believe there will be any special issues in launching it from a catapult, even at maximum takeoff weight. The maximum takeoff weight is a bit high, but that's what the sources are saying, so take it with a pinch of salt. In any case, there are official drawings that show a drone like the GJ-11 on the deck of a Type 003 or Type 004 carrier, or even on the deck of the conjectured Type 076 amphibious assault ship. All these three types of ships will be equipped with electromagnetic catapults, at least according to the plans. 
Operating a drone from a carrier is obviously more challenging than operating a drone from a land base. However, it is a technology that doesn't require a particular breakthrough, so it is probably within reach of everyone who wants to put the effort in it. And if this was the case, it may well happen that the Chinese are going to be the first to deploy a combat drone on board of a carrier. All these systems that we have just described do exist with the purpose of supporting the combat component of the carrier wing. And the combat component will be the subject of the next video. If you like this video, there are several other videos about the Chinese Navy, the Chinese Air Force on the channel, and they're going to appear beside me. Thank you very much to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or being a member. And if you like this video, just thank you very much for watching and see you there.